Hi friends, the topic of today's video is Bethel. Why did Russell choose this name and why did he choose to locate his world headquarters in a neighborhood called Brooklyn Heights? And also, what does the Bible have to say about this word? Stay tuned because it's going to get really good. I was actually going to film this video at the location of where Bethel used to be located, but the weather didn't cooperate, so I decided against it. Oh, and by the way, were you aware about a year ago, Watchtower sold its last Brooklyn property, which was a parking lot for $91 million. That's right, a parking lot for $91 million. There's a monument in Cadman Plaza Park, not far from where Bethel used to be located in Brooklyn. I've actually been to this monument and I had no idea that it had any ties with Watchtower whatsoever. The monument was dedicated in 1891 and it states that it honors the esteemed clergyman, abolitionist, and orator Henry Ward Beecher. This very famous clergyman had his reputation tarnished towards the end of his life due to an accusation of adultery but he was acquitted of all charges in 1875. He died on March the 8th, 1887. As of one of the most famous preachers of his time, he championed the theory of evolution, attempting to sway his liberal Christian followers into believing that one could believe both in Darwinism, evolution, and creationism. I'm not really sure how one can believe in both Darwinism and creationism, but I guess he was able to sway some. The famous New Yorker magazine republished a letter to the editor from New York World in the year 1871. It was written by a very famous local woman who was a spiritist and whose sister was well known as a magnetic healer with the local Vanderbilts who claim to have made what they call a killing in the stock market after the prediction these women made while in a trance. Anyway, the letter to the editor states, she said, my judges preach against free love openly and practice it secretly. Their outward seeming is fair, but inwardly they are full of dead men's bones and all manner of uncleanness. For example, I know of one man, a public teacher of eminence, who lives in concubinage, or basically had a concubine, with the wife of another public teacher of almost equal eminence. Well, who was this famous man that this spiritualist was talking about? It was Henry Ward Beecher. He was the famous Congregationalist preacher who had a church in Brooklyn Heights. The article goes on to say that the parties to this affair, which were Beecher, a Congregational member by the name of Tilton, and his wife. But all parties agreed to keep this affair secret. And why do you think? It was in order to preserve Beecher's good name. Does that sound familiar? Well, let's move on. The 1875 scandal went to trial because it was considered a criminal offense back then. And it was so widely publicized that it drew the attention and commentary of Susan B. Anthony, among others. Ultimately, as I had said earlier, Beecher was acquitted and cleared of all charges. Well, now that we know who this famous clergyman and preacher Henry Ward Beecher was, let's go to JW.org and see how he fits into this scenario and what occurred 30 years later. Under the topic Brooklyn Bethel History, JW.org states, with the move to Brooklyn in 1909, though, the new residence for the staff members was called Bethel. Why Bethel? The property that the Watchtower Society purchased at 13 to 17 Hicks Street was owned by the prominent clergyman Henry Ward Beecher. So Watchtower purchased one of his properties and called it Bethel. But that's not all. Beecher's former residence located at 124 Columbia Heights was also purchased. Isn't that interesting that Watchtower would purchase buildings owned by another clergyman? 
And by the way, I stumbled upon another article written by Ed Halpis, who had a title of Grand Lodge Educational Officer in a Masonic Lodge in Minnesota. In an article in Masonic Matters titled Truth and Tolerance, he offers this quote, nothing dies so hard or rallies so often as intolerance. Henry Ward Beecher, preacher. I find that interesting. Here's a footnote on JW.org. The Hebrew word Bethel means house of God. In the Bible, Bethel was a prominent Israelite city. Only the city of Jerusalem is mentioned more frequently. Well, now that we know where the word Bethel originated with Watchtower, let's move to scripture and see what Bethel was in Bible time. So from scripture, we read that Bethel was just north of Jerusalem on the border between the tribes of Benjamin and Ephraim. It was first mentioned in the account of Abram when Abram built an altar there in Genesis 12 verse 8 and he made sacrifices to God. Later on it was mentioned in Genesis chapter 28 and it was the place where Jacob had the dream of the ladder reaching up to heaven where he saw the angels ascending and descending. Second Chronicles chapter six, verse six, though, records this. But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. So even though earlier sacrifices and altars were built in Bethel, Second Chronicles clearly states that Jerusalem and the house of David was God's only choice of worship. Now, scripture takes a little bit of a turn because Jeroboam rebelled against the house of David, which at that time was ruled by Rehoboam. The outcome was that the nation of Israel was divided. Jeroboam became king of the larger tribes named Israel, and Rehoboam became king of the smaller tribe named Judah. Jeroboam will forever be known as the king who caused Israel to sin. He became the prototype of an evil king. And the books of First and Second Kings records 15 kings who were known to be evil like Jeroboam. You can read more of Jeroboam's stories in the book of First Kings chapters 11 through 14 and Second Chronicles chapters 10 through 13. Many of the Israelites were heartbroken that the kingdom was divided and Jeroboam was very fearful that they would reunite. Well, a reunion would only occur under the rightful heir, which was Rehoboam in the house of David. And if this occurred, it would surely be the death of Jeroboam. Not only that, the Lord required an annual pilgrimage at three different times in the year to worship him. And that occurred in Jerusalem. Jeroboam knew that King Solomon had be built beautiful palaces there and the temple was considered an architectural wonder of the world. He knew that his people would have such a desire to take a pilgrimage to Jerusalem for these three festivals a year. So what did he do? He built two places of false worship. One was located in the Northern Territory in Dan and one was located in the Southern Territory at Bethel and everybody making a pilgrimage to Jerusalem would have to pass by this place of false worship. So Jeroboam abolished the national religion and built these altars to a golden calf in these two regions, the north in Dan and the south in Bethel. This cult of the golden calf became an ongoing thorn in and snare in the side of Israel. First Kings chapter 13 records an event that had occurred. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Now hold on just a minute. Jeroboam was a king, but he was also acting as a priest here. That was not allowed. You either were a king or a priest, not both. Scripture records one individual who was a, both a king and a priest, and that was Jesus. And Jesus offered himself as the sacrifice, but that's the topic of another video. And so Jeroboam is standing, King Jeroboam is standing at the altar offering sacrifices as a priest would do. 
Let's move on. And he cried against the altar and the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus said the Lord, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense unto thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And this is, of course, exactly what happened in the 7th century B.C. Josiah, he was a good old boy, he was a faithful king, and he burnt down all of the altars at Bethel at the command of God. So many prophets pronounced judgment and condemnation on Bethel, and their accounts can be read at Amos chapter 3, Amos chapter 5, and Hosea chapter 10. And by the way, Bethel is not referred to in the New Testament at all. So internet friends, what do you think about this evidence surrounding the word Bethel? What do you think about Henry Ward Beecher and how Russell wanted to model him by purchasing not only his former residence, but another building and placing his world headquarters there? Please leave me a comment. I'd love to know what you think. Remember, Jesus is the reason for the season. He is the savior of the world. He was the promised king coming from the house of David. I hope you have a wonderful day, and once again, I'll see you real soon on the other side of the screen.